I, 28, male, have been together with my wife since I was 20. After three years of dating, we decided to tie the knot. We both felt ready. Soon after we got married, my wife conceived a child. We were both very excited to welcome the new member of our family. I started working more just to ensure the house was ready for the baby. My wife was very excited about the new addition as well, but everything changed when she got into a car accident. She was six months pregnant by that time. She had gone out for her evening walk like she always did. My wife always loved long walks and I was going to pick her up from the Walmart that she was heading towards. But on the way, she got hit by a car. It was a hit and run and we never caught the culprit. Luckily, she got the help that she needed, so she is still with me today. But the doctors could not save the baby. The operation they did to contain the bleeding also ended up making my wife infertile. At the moment when I was told that they wouldn't be able to save the baby if they went through the operation, I agreed to the procedure. I thought I made the right decision. However, my wife did not agree. My wife strongly believed that I should have chosen the baby instead of her. I tried to explain to her that the baby was not at full term and the child would not have survived. However, my wife strongly believed that I should have chosen the baby over her because of this, our marriage started to fall apart. She barely spoke with me and while I tried my best to be there for her, it was hard being there for someone who refused to be civil. Our marriage was falling apart after just two years of marriage. I felt helpless and hopeless. I had no idea what I was supposed to do to make sure our wedding survived what it was going through. I expressed my feelings and my helplessness when we got into an argument around our third anniversary. I did not hold myself back, and I may have said a lot of hurtful things at the moment. I was angry and upset, and it felt like I was the only one who wanted to make this marriage work while she was still stuck in the accident. After that fight, Things started changing between us. It was like that argument opened my wife's eyes. She started talking to me more. She expressed the way she felt and she asked for my help whenever she felt her mood tank. We started working on everything together. Suddenly we were a team again. I was extremely happy about it. We both made some reasonable compromises and adjustments, mostly on my part. And I was not too upset about it. I was happy to know that my wife and I were open to working on things again. By the time our fourth anniversary rolled up, our relationship was seemingly out of the hot waters. Sometimes she would have her depressive episodes, but we did the necessary things. We got help for her depression. I went to workshops to help her better. And overall, we were making good progress. Eventually, when our fifth anniversary came up, which was three days ago, I was very excited. I felt like I had found my wife back. She was back to being the way she was. The color in her cheeks had returned. She had started eating properly. She had gained some healthy weight and she was taking care of herself. So I thought it would be great to have the most romantic dinner for our fifth anniversary. I went all out for it, honestly. I took her to a restaurant she has had her eyes on for a while, and we went to the movies after. When we came home, I had the whole room decorated and had gifts for her. I did my best to make sure this anniversary was better than all other anniversaries we had until now. She was extremely happy with how everything went. She was smiling the entire time, and I was happy seeing her like that. She seemed like the woman I had loved in the first place. When we went to bed that night, we were curled up against one another after a long time. I had not had her hold me the way she did in a while. When I woke up, she was not in the bed. I assumed she was in the kitchen because my wife loves surprising me with breakfast in bed and so it was pretty common for her to wake up a few hours earlier to make something for us. So I did not bat an eye at the empty bed. But as minutes ticked by, I realized I could not hear anything from the kitchen. Our bedroom is not soundproof or anything, so usually I would hear some noise. When I went out of the bedroom, I noticed that the entire house was quiet. My wife was not there. I thought she went out to buy breakfast. I called her number and it was unreachable. That worried me a little, but then I noticed how the room seemed empty. That was when I realized that all of my wife's stuff was gone. 
My wife is a minimalistic person, so she never really had loads of things in the first place. But whatever she had, they were gone. Panicking, I ran from one room to another trying to see if she had taken everything when I noticed something by her pillow. It was a letter. In that letter, my wife explained how she was not happy with the life we had and she wanted a break. She had been considering that perhaps it is not her, it is me. Maybe she would be happy with someone else, which is why she's going far away from me. She has accepted a job in another country and she will send me the papers when she feels ready. I have read the same letter multiple times over the past three days and I do not know how I'm supposed to deal with this. I do not know how I am supposed to feel. Has anyone been in my shoes before? If yes, what do you suggest I do? Any advice would be appreciated. Update 1 Hey everyone, I do not know if anyone is following this post or not, but something has happened that I want to talk to you guys about. It has been about four months since my wife left me and life was pretty bland. I missed her all the time and did not know what I was supposed to do. She had deleted her social media, so I had no way of reaching her. Well, after no contact for four months, she messaged me yesterday from her new number. She told me that she's in Sweden working as an accountant. She wants me to come over and have a face-to-face -face conversation because she feels like she's ready for the conversation again. I'm planning on visiting her. I want to see her and I want to know where I came short that she left the way she did. I'm a little worried about how I will react uh, to this whole thing. For the past four months, I've waited for my wife, waited for her to reach out to me. And now that she has finally reached out to me, I feel overwhelmed. I will meet her. I want to talk to her, but I also do not know how things will turn out. I want her back. I love her so much. I just do not know what she will say to me when she sees me. I'm worried that she will give me the papers face to face and I do not know if I'll be able to deal with that pain. I do not want to let her go, but at the same time I want her to be happy, even if it is not with me. I do not know what I should do. I wish I did, but I do not. Update 2 Hi, things took a turn, but for the better this time around. I met my wife and I swear she had never looked that beautiful. At first, I thought she was healthy when she was with me, but now that I've seen her, she looks so much better. She paid for the flight and booked a hotel for me near her apartment. Once I had settled in, we met for coffee. Over coffee, we discussed how she felt about me. She told me that it was not my fault and she was wrong to assume that it was me who was the problem in the relationship. It was the environment that made her feel trapped. She wanted to move on from the grief and even when she did, the fact that we still stayed in the same house kept her tied down to the grief without letting her move on completely, which is why, even though on the surface she seemed okay, deep down she was tired, exhausted and done. She thought that maybe being with someone else would make her feel better, which is why she decided to take the job offer at Sweden, but after she moved here, she realized that she only saw her life with me. She could not imagine herself being with someone else. She just needed a break, an escape from everything. I asked her why she did not contact me earlier and why she had gone away the way she did. And she told me that she was not thinking properly. She told me that she was impulsive and that she would understand if I did not forgive her. I felt so bad. The moment when she explained how she felt, I feel like I had failed as a husband to provide for her. I promised to be there for her and yet I had somewhere left for her to fight her demons by herself. Once we had talked about everything, my wife asked if I still loved her. I told her I did and she asked me if I wanted to give this another go. I said I do. I moved in with her. I can see how happy she is here. I'm planning on moving here with her. She deserves to be happy. Update 3 Hey everyone. It's our sixth anniversary and we're still together. We are currently in Italy to celebrate our anniversary. So far, things have been really good between us. We're working on our marriage and we have been to couples therapy together just to resolve and work on the emotions that we both may be feeling. Things are going well. I am glad I did not leave. She truly loves me and I love her just as much. 
Hey, OP. I'm sorry to hear what you're going through. That sounds like a really tough time. The only advice that I have for you is to think you should have faith in her. If she loves you, I'm sure she will reach out, but I also do not want you to wait for her for eternity. This is such a bad situation. I can understand that your wife has been struggling with some mental issues. Sometimes it is easier to up and leave instead of communicating and working around those issues. So I think you should try and reach out to her, at least wait for her to reach out to you because I'm sure that she loves you. It is very evident from the way you've described your relationship that she loves you and I'm sure she will come around. Please have faith. Next story. I'm 22, female. My cousin, 24, male, is getting married next weekend. He proposed to his girlfriend, 25, female, on Wednesday and wants to get married by the next Saturday. They want to hold the ceremony at our grandparents' house, which I have the legal inheritance of. I have no objections to them wanting to get married there or anything. Also, there's no reason to technically rush the wedding, but they say they are in a very happy place and want to be married ASAP. Well, whatever rows their boat. They want to hold the ceremony in the backyard and there's this platform of sorts where they want the wedding party to sit at the reception. The thing is, one of their bridesmaids, 24, 25, female, is a wheelchair user and so they want to add a ramp to the platform. Now the conflict is, they asked me to get a ramp there. I've talked to the contractor who has done most of the furniture and stuff in that house and he says he can only get to it next month. He's busy with some personal affairs. I told my cousin this and he and his fiance are very mad at me when I refuse to hire a different contractor or get a quick work done. I have offered to attach a temporary ramp, the detachable kind, which I could rent from a nearby shop. Instead, the bridesmaid is refusing this, saying she deserves better accommodative and accepting facility. Thing to be noted is, The cousin doesn't want to pay for ramp construction since it's not his house and doesn't even want to pay any percentage of the rent for ramp. Also, the rest of the house is wheelchair accessible since my grandma needed it, including washrooms. It's only this platform for some reason has no ramp but only stairs. I don't want any sloppy or expensive ramp done in a rush because I don't have that kind of money saved or want to compromise the quality. The bride texted me saying she and my cousin have always walked on eggshells around me to make accommodations for my handicap and feelings. This is the least I can do for them. For reference, my handicap is my autism. It's never occurred to me it's a handicap or issue for people, at least family, to be around me. When I talked to my parents about this, they were very angry at her and have refused to attend weddings where their kid is disrespected. When my aunt groom's mom, found out about this whole thing, she was red angry and said she might not attend the wedding too. Now the bride is calling me an ableist and instigator. AITA? Edit. Wheelchair user instead of bound. Sorry, wasn't aware of the negative connotation. Edit 2. Mostly everyone saying I shouldn't let them host the wedding there seems unfair since it was his grandparents' home too, but yes... I may not attend the wedding. It's disrespectful, I see. Edit 3. Thanks for everything. Posted a request for an update. Hopefully, it will be up soon. Update. Thank you, everyone, for all the comments and explanations. It really helped me understand the entirety of the situation. Well, after reading all the comments, the general consensus was not to let them use my house for weddings, and when I asked my parents about this, they wholeheartedly agreed. Well. It so happened we were at the said house, we being me, my parents, and my aunt, groom's mom, when I texted my cousin saying, I'm sorry, but I'm not comfortable with you hosting the wedding or reception in my house. And he simply texted back, okay. That's when my aunt called him up and started yelling how he was raised better. And he Being disrespectful to his sister isn't what she ever expected. She said she won't attend the wedding and when undoubtedly the marriage will fail, he'll come back to his senses and his family. He was shell-shocked, would be an understatement. He immediately came over to meet us all and when I told him about the handicap text from his bride-to-be, he was taken aback. 
He apologized profusely. He literally said he's begging for forgiveness. Yes, he was irrational for the ramp demand, but the bridesmaid was emotionally manipulating him and blackmailing him a lot. He called off the wedding and has gone no contact with fiancé. She saw the original post on Reddit and texted me calling me a tattletale dimwit. So F you, Carol. Also, as it turns out, they were rushing the wedding because she didn't want to sign a prenup. Dodged a bullet there, it seems. Yes, she said this part herself, yelling in rage. So no wedding, but my aunt is hosting dinner the night of the wedding and making my favorite dishes. Once again, thank you, everyone. NTA, you offered a perfect solution in the rental ramp and they are being controlling, ungrateful and ridiculous. It is also really gross for them to reference your neurodivergence as some sort of weight to hold over your head. Please stand your ground, OP. You are already being very generous and giving them a workaround with the rental ramp. It is up to them to accept or not. Next story. I, 28, male, have never had a good relationship with my dad, 68, male. He was too strict and barely spoke to me but was perfect for my siblings. It's mainly because he was a very wild teenager and I guess he saw himself in me somehow. He thinks I'm a screw-up for having a child at a young age even though I have a master's degree, have a high-paying job and my son actually likes me. My son, 6, male, has recently gotten into the habit of calling me by my first name. I think it's adorable and hilarious and I don't mind at all. In turn, I call him by his full name. He has a long first name and we usually address him with a shortened version. So if his name was Nicholas, we call him Nick. Sometimes I add embellishment so he'd be Sir Nicholas the First or something ridiculous like that. It's hilarious and I love it. My dad thinks I'm allowing my son to disrespect me and he has shouted at my son before for it. I forced him to apologize. I still have a very good relationship with my mother, 64, female, and she often watches my son for me while I'm at work or busy. When I went to pick him up yesterday, he said, hello, my name, and I shook his hand and said, sir, his full first name. My mom was rightfully confused, so I explained the joke to her and she found it hilarious. My father overheard this conversation and said that I was teaching my son that it's funny to disrespect me. He started yelling at my son to apologize to me and I snapped and said, this is why I don't like you. You're freaking weird. Yes, I know I shouldn't have sworn around my son. My dad asked what I meant by weird and I told him his personality is awful and he's extremely weird to be so bothered about a child being funny. I took my son and left after that. My brother called me later and said I was an a-hole for insulting our dad. He's saying that insulting someone's whole personality is out of line and instead I could have insulted his actions and I made it worse by saying it's the reason I don't like him. He's saying that I should apologize but I don't think I'm wrong. A-I-T-A? -A? N-T-A. He's an A-H for telling your son off though when you've already told him that it's not an issue. But is this really a weird personality? He just sounds like a grumpy old man to me. A lot of older people find it disrespectful to be addressed by their first name by someone younger. Sounds like he can't wrap his head around the idea that it's not disrespect but a joke between you and your son. NTA, you already told your dad he was out of line scolding your son for something you had no issue with. If your father can't respect that boundary, he needs to deal with the consequences. However, I'd urge you to explore your feelings towards him a bit more. Weird is such an ambiguous term. It leaves great room for interpretation on his end too. If you're comfortable taking the time to articulate your thoughts towards him in more concrete terms, it may give you more insight and could also give him direction to understand where he's going wrong. What he does with that information is on him. If he's smart, he'll try doing better. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.